开始了啊、哦！开始他的表演，吉祥物，波仔他的腿，短短的，对不对？这样在吉祥物身上反而特别的可爱，蹦蹦跳跳，而且他的左手呢还拿着我们乒乓球这次世界杯的印有世界杯 logo 的球拍。各位，谁已经入手波仔吉祥物的？举个手，我看一下，有谁买了波仔的？哎呦，很多很多啊！我听说在外面波仔销售的情况也是特别好。那今天还有明天以及后天，在比赛当中，我们波仔的吉祥物呢都会出来跟大家见面。再次把掌声送给可爱的波仔，好不好？哎，谢谢波仔，带你回去啦，走吧，谢谢。谢谢我们可爱的吉祥物波仔，还有谢谢我们的杜老师。那么现在进入到我们。幸运观众的幸运时刻，你们兴奋吗？期待吗？好，来，我们马上送出三份的礼物，我们送出三组的幸运观众。我们第一组幸运的观众会是交给我们的镜头来搜寻一下，期待一下我们第一组的礼物会是谁呢？来，我们三、二。第一组 Lucky Cam 的幸运观众就是你们两位白色衣服的，对姐姐啊，好，恭喜你们获得泸州老窖运动徽章两份，谢谢，恭喜你们。好，那还有谁想要获得幸运的礼物的幸运观众呢？ We have a bit of history to bring you here. It's all set here. The big stage, the big occasion. The ITTF World Cup is back. Beautiful, shiny, sparkling city. The biggest stars in the world are here. The crowd has shown up. It's what we've all been waiting for. Time and time again, these two greats are providing us superb entertainment. A massive moment here. How can you play table tennis any better? Tested everywhere on the table. Are we about to witness the turning of tides and the changing of lights? Watch me in action. Hello, welcome to the Galaxy Arena. Very good morning to you. This is the venue for the ITTF World Cup Macau 2024. And we are into the last three days of action. This is uh, the men's table, table one, where only the men players have been on. And it is now into the quarterfinal stage of this competition. Next one, table two, will be the women. So we're going to be switching uh, our attention from table to table as we look at the men's uh, schedule now in between there'll be a women's match as well we'll have four matches for you uh, this morning two men's and two women's there'll be a break and then the evening session it will be the same thing to complete the quarterfinals before we head to the semi-finals looking at the brackets here uh, and with me in the commentary position to give his analysis of it Glenn Mascarinus a very good morning to you Glenn Good morning, Shares, and I think uh, we've got a big, exciting lineup for us. We start off the morning itself with so much of action. Um, yesterday, we had uh, some of the finest matches we've seen right through this entire contest. Um, very happy to be seeing two big players to kick off the morning session. And um, one player, of course, who we've had eyes on since yesterday after his performance, and that's Anton Chalbury. What a performance from him yesterday. That might be the one that uh, stands out. It certainly was uh, an upset, wasn't it? Uh, we had two upsets. Should get to Gami also beat Omar Asar. But in terms of uh, achievement, in terms of the opponent, for Anto Shabri to beat Liang Jingkun in China, I mean, that is got to be impressive. Well, absolutely. I mean, beating, taking out one of the top seeds there, what a what an event and what a performance from him. So uh, today, it's an all-new day. Let's not forget, it's a mixed bag for Shazad and me, and uh, just really excited uh, to be looking at it from that angle. We get to cover the men's and the women's, and what a variety it's going to be. We get the, well, energy, the thrill, and the exuberance of the men, and then we get, of course, the elegance 
and the competitive spirit of the women. It's going to be one complete day. Very well put there, Glenn. Yes, all to come here. And going to go before the participants enter the arena. Work home players and umpires. First, Anton Karberg representing Sweden. That's the region. Anton Karboga. Oh, coming up first. Anton Schaubry is the first player on his feet. Isaac Quack 4 0. Lim Jong Hun 2 0. And then Yang Jing Hun. A rip roaring affair. Those are his three results. The Swede is in fine form. Then Tomokazu. Harimoto of Japan. Uh, let's see what he has achieved so far, the youngster. Uh, we are said youngster is fighting around for a very long time. We beat uh, Andre Gacina 3 1. Jonathan Groth 2 all. And then he had a fine result in the last game, in the last match. Oh, absolutely great result uh, uh, that he had. And I think the, the good thing about him is we saw how he can bring you know, the game uh, to the table and how exactly, well, he can decimate his uh, opponent. So it's a very, very important one. Let's not forget that uh, in the group stages, he also had a good time, but the big thing that he did yesterday was the uh, Freitas. So Freitas, of course, uh, put on such a show, but somehow the other hurry moment is so hard. And so I think it's a very interesting battle that we're going to see here. Once again, Harimoto is not facing an Asian, he's facing a European player. And he's facing a player, of course, who's very different from Freitas. Freitas himself is a fabulous player to watch on his day. And yesterday we know that he did give us uh, some really exciting uh, you know, games. He took two games of Harimoto. But Goldberg, on the other hand, was an entirely different machine yesterday. So will Harimoto be able to combat that and overcome that? Or will Schalberg use his, well, skill and more importantly his strategy to get the better of Harimoto? I think very, very interesting start to the day. Two contrasting styles and two amazing players. Yeah, I think uh, when you look at the head-to-head, -head, which we'll tell you about very shortly, it is a uh, great between these two. As we complete the toss. Quick warm up then. So Anton Schalbury is uh, 26. He is currently 15th in the world. He's been a little bit higher at 13th. And he got to the quarterfinals of the Europe Top 16 Cup in Montreal earlier this year's best result of 2024. Momokazu Harimoto is currently number nine in the world. He has been, of course, the world number two. And that was the end of 2022. Uh, our umpire paid way in. And Miguel Lagos is the assistant umpire. Now you look at some of the achievements of Tomokazu Harimoto, who's got an Olympic bronze medal in team event at the Tokyo Games. In terms of uh, singles, he has a World Cup silver very event in the world ET Cup Finals. He's finished second twice in 2021 and 2022. He's won the ITTF World Tour Grand Finals in 2018 and uh, in 2019 at the Asian Championships. He was third. He won the Asian Cup in 2022 
and is a former silver medalist or is a silver medalist from the Summer Youth Olympics of 20, for 2018. For Shalbury, his big achievements, a world championship uh, bronze, the team event in 2018. Uh, in terms of singles, that is his best. He's also won three singles titles. Most recently, the WTT contender in Tunis, where he beat Patrick Francisca in the final. Now, Glenn, the, the, the most interesting thing, thing about this is uh, we're talking about Tomokazu Harimoto, who's one of the most accomplished players in the world, and yet, against Shalbury, it's a four-all, uh, sorry, a four-all head-to-head record. They most recently played in the what the mixed team World Cup that was in Chengdu, and Harimoto won that two-one because it was uh, best of three then. But Schalberg had beaten him last year in Musket at the WTT contender there, three-two. So he knows he's recently beaten him as well. That's important to have in the memory bank. Well, it certainly is, and I think though. One of the uh, key thoughts that we saw yes in yesterday's game when Calvary was playing is um, he is he gauges the opponent extremely well. He's a very calm and collected player. He's got a great temperament. Uh, more importantly, I don't think that he looks at any opponent as being bigger than him. Yeah, every opponent Definitely. is on the same stage at the same level, and that's how he's going to approach this game. Uh, you're right about that. They've had so many meetings, and let's not forget that they know each other's game so well. Yeah, I mean, with the amount of times that they've met, um, and you're and you're right. The way he approached Liang Jingkun yesterday, he was like he was the number three. Yeah, it, it didn't <laughs> feel like he was. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I'm 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 not playing the one number three, and I'm, you know, just gonna try and see what happens. He wasn't tentative, was he? Oh, he, he was. Played with full confidence. He went full throttle, and the dividends paid off. He's four two up here against Harimoto. But we also know the pedigree of Harimoto and how he can get, you know, explosive and really sharp. Correct. He also is a, is a thinking player. He was, there's just very, very, uh, you know, different players right now in, in this quarter finals that we are looking at. And each of them brings their own characteristic. But I think out of all the players that we've got, the two players who embody that kind of temperament, that kind of, you know, calmness, I think one is Shalbri, the other, of course, is Malong who basically sets the tone for it uh, till he was riled up a bit yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a very good four-point lead from Shalbury. I think it's a good start. It's exactly what the Swede would have wanted. Something's just happened here, looking to change the ball, I think. And I did confirm this, Shez. Uh, he does have his, uh, his family traveling with him. So his, his his relatives are traveling with him and they are around him at the tournament in Macau. I don't know whether they do that every day. They probably just wanted to come see Macau too. Which is, of course, uh, something that we've got to give a note here. Uh, you know, if you haven't had the opportunity to visit this beautiful place, there's uh, so much of uh, what I love here, of course, is besides the people is, is the food so you might want to come down and see then now Macau is becoming very slowly one of the strongest mm. sporting arenas and uh, I absolutely love that there's so many events happening here uh, and to have the you know the table tennis world cup I think it's just fantastic Harimoto to serve four ticks yeah yesterday beating Lang uh, Kun in a seven game thriller we didn't see that coming at all. No, and, and actually he was 3-1 up, and we, it, we thought he'd missed his chance. That's a brilliant shot on the forehand down the line from Shalbury. Well, it's a decent lead that he's picked up. I think uh, what served the Swede extremely well to pick up the first game, get started. This is something you noticed he was doing with Liang Jinkung. When he's playing players who have explosive shots who are fast, he'll always tend to get them to make a few errors. He did that throughout uh, with Liang Jinkung. And it was just a bit surprising to see Liang Jinkung knock so many shots 
out of the table. And uh, all those errors, of course, did contribute to uh, him finally going down. It's got to be the strangest shot there. But if it works, Shalbury will pick up nine. Oh, look where he was when he oh, played that's that. That's a nice pick up. <laughs> that was a beautiful pick up, wasn't it? It was, wasn't it? So low down. Have another look here. He just made it look as natural as possible. <laughs> Not too much effort in that. Just smoothly got, got to it. Another time with the net. And a quick apology there from Harimoto. He's been uh, a little bit quiet at the start of this, I knew, unlike him. He's got two points closer. I think the net, for all just being his buddy for both those points. <laughs> Lovely stuff from Calgary. There you go. Now he's getting into it. He's just a point behind. This is excellent from Harimoto. Three points in a row. This is something you want to try and avoid. Um, Shalbri did hold a decent enough lead. But if you well, allow Harimoto to step in, ah! and that's what oh, happens. Oh, Harimoto. Brilliant. The momentum is with the Japanese player. Four in a row, Shez. Four in a row. Yeah, he's really coming good at the right time in this game. And this is exactly where you win that mental battle, isn't it? In the first game mm. itself. <laughs> Finally, relief here for Shalbury. Well, if he can do well with the next point, he'll just save himself the blushes and maybe a little bit of perspiration. <laughs> Game point here for Shalbury. Can he convert? Yes, he can. He was under some pressure here because Harimoto was powerful. But Shalbury saw off that challenge and has taken the first game. And important for him. I think that's a great start for Shalbury, especially this last bit. Just needed to finish it off fast before. You know, Harimoto got back into a rally, but well done there. So it's been, it's been quick exchanges in the first game. So Shalbury takes the first game against uh, Harimoto 11-9 here in the men's quarterfinal. Well, a fantastic start. Now, Glenn, what we've seen uh, throughout the knockout rounds is the lower-ranked player has punched above his weight, played really well. And I think we were just saying, no player lost to love or to zero or to one. Everyone got two games yesterday. It was such a such an amazing contest, wasn't it? And uh, we think that, you know, it, it's probably going to get over a lot faster because... Uh, you know, you've got some of the big big seeds in there, and, and they're just going to make it really easy. And then we saw a few big seeds fall. We saw each game being stretched. I mean, thrillers, one after the other, was quite fascinating. We, we enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. But uh, after yesterday, <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we aren't calling the yeah. result for any game. No, no, <laughs> We're just going to follow it <laughs> right through with the action. Punch there from... Harimoto to gain the point. Well, he's just beginning to show his... to dominate this game. Probably he wants to 
you know, at least set the tone right. Um, level up. Oh, lovely. Direct to that down the line, Shelbury. Very easily done. He knew where he was going to go with it. And that's why Shalbury also does have a unique variation with serve. Most often, he can get that, you know, that shot winner right. Um, but when it goes down to a few exchanges, that's where Harimoto does shine. Having said that, wasn't Shalbury one of the players yesterday who got the ball in from a difficult angle yeah. and from a distance? He yeah. had about two or three players to do that, to win points on that. Yeah, Something countering so far back from the table. Did a great job at that. So three all here. Shall we to serve? Harimoto just checking in on the. Just trying to figure out whether there was some sort of distraction behind. That's a very, very clear, a very clean winner from Shalbury. He moves up to 4 all. It's been, uh, well, does get Harimoto on that right area very often. Um, he knows that Harimoto works faster with the backhand more towards the left. And Harimoto just rectifying that, yeah. It was interesting to read uh, Shalbury's comments after beating Dang Jin Kun yesterday. He said there's a reason for that win. Maybe I can make him feel a bit uncomfortable and try to play really fast and put him under a lot of pressure. He said uh, he's very good at catching a lot of balls. He has a lot of spin on all these strokes, but I'm trying to on it. And I have chances to finish off the points fast. I think that's a very important point he's made there. Yang Chen Kun did play safe yesterday, especially after he was on the back foot. And I think... Uh, Shalbury's right. He actually exploited that. Well put. Well put. Makes yeah. it very clear for us. Mm. I'll tell you a bit more about what he said. Honey uh, Water increases his lead to two. He said um, he has a lot of spin playing a bit safe, but I can, so I can have some chances to finish off the points fast. But I know just a few weeks ago, I lost 3-2 with two 11 nines, and I wanted revenge for that match. So I'm very happy I won. I don't know who I'm playing in the quarterfinal yet. This is before he knew he was playing Harimoto. And he said, uh, I think I'll just enjoy the victory for a couple of hours, try to get some rest, and then start again to, and then start to prepare. And he said, I'm looking forward to playing in front of many fans tomorrow again. So that's interesting. And let's not forget that Chalbury also has his, uh, well, besides his folks, he also has the, the Swedish fans have turned up in quite a big number. They're very noticeable uh, with their, you know, their yes. colors. And they've been there right through. Now, very important uh, to keep in mind two things about Shalbury. I think he's a very, very organized lad. Uh, the first, of course, is that he did want payback, which is normal competition <laughs> with any player. But the second is to accept that you won today. Tomorrow, it's a new day. You wind yourself up, get back to work. And I think that's very, very mature. Well, Harimoto's doing well here, and he's set up five game points in the second game. Oh, he's been extremely aggressive. Well, I think that was the plan when he got into the second game, to level up. And that'll have to wait just a little bit. Shalbury claims one. Shalbury, uh, today, though, slight bit cautious. Yesterday, he was... Uh, it looked like he was playing fearless, taking as many risks as possible. 
Moved out to seven, so saves another game point there. Still three game points for uh, Tomokazu, Harimoto. Much better. Yep, yep, yep. Wrapped up for Harimoto. Much better from him. And uh, as we thought might be the case, Harimoto bounces back immediately. Couple of pushes first and then. Well, he wasn't going to sit back for too long, but this one, well, just was waiting. Chalbury's mistaken. Well, sure enough, soon enough. Just a few glimpses of well, what Harimoto well, did come up with and what's been the battle between these two stars. So we get back into the third game and this of course will be a very very interesting one for us because now keep in mind the fact that these two players are leveled at one all and I think it's been a very interesting one. Shalbri kicking it off with a win in the first game. Um, Harimoto coming back as strong as he could in the second. And Chalbury will start with the serve in game number three. Yeah, this is nicely poised now with uh, both players on the scoreboard. Start off with a killer instinct there. Harimoto. Not taking any chances. Flat. Love one. Hey. one off. Yeah, he likes that one, doesn't he, Shelbury? Well, he loves to play from that angle. It gives him a bit of freedom to move his feet, open up the body just a tad bit. It's one of his uh, favorite areas to get a winner from. That's another one of his favorite shots played down the line. So it's Shalbury at two, Harimoto at one, Harimoto to sell. Uh, uh, oh, lovely flick there yeah. from Harimoto. Just listen to the shouts, those grunts from Harimoto trying to get himself psyched up. First rally of the morning, even yeah, though really it wasn't nice. too long, but yeah, worked well. There you go, Harimoto and Shalbury well, going at each other until. Well, the attempt at a top spin just got the wrong angle. Are you okay? Harimoto very vocal when he does apologize. Uh, other players will just put up a hand and give a sign. Uh, whenever there's a net, well, interference. Well, nothing between these two at the moment. So tight. That's Harimoto comes out on top there. Harimoto really keen on well finishing the points quickly. Doesn't want too many exchanges. Well, 
Let's go back and forth here. Yeah, you know he's winning by just listening to the sounds. Even Stevens back again. Yeah, Harimoto just drawing himself back in, but he's got the serve. It's five all. Um, a lot tighter this game than the first two, where we pretty much knew who was going to go into the lead and hold on to it. So that's where it should be. Albury well, wins one. Harimoto won, and yeah, in the third game, it's already a very strong contest. Yeah, he's pumped, isn't he, Harimoto? Six all. They've all been tight games, Glenn. They have been. They have been. But this one, I think, is just kind of well a bit tighter. Harimoto will celebrate every point. You're right about that, Chess. In the on game one, he was just very, very silent. It was a bit unnerving. Yeah, he's at the head here. Harimoto. Harimoto very keen on winning this, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> now, two point cushion here over Shalbury. on fire in this game he's racing ahead I think it's time for Shalbury just to well pause a little bit and think because it's been five points in a row finally Shalbury breaks back in it's now 7-9 There once again placement and if you got to beat Harimoto well I think Shalbury will have figured that out by now you got to just get it straight down the line or Seven away nine. from him and that pretty much works draw him into a rally and Harimoto will finish it Eight, nine. just a tad bit uncomfortable there for Harimoto Shalbury serving straight oh, into him so they're going for a first game sorry third game timeout here at a crucial moment with Shalbury chasing. Good moment here for Tomokazu Harimoto. In good moment in the match, you were maybe a little, maybe you found it a little puzzling for him to take the 
the timeout. Well, to me, he went ahead with, he claimed five points and then lost two points, which I agree were good points, but I did not see it as anything unusual from the last three games. Maybe he wants to win this game and that's his concern. It's nine all. But I'm just saying, you don't want to squander your time out at a point where you're still going neck and neck with your opponent. Uh, I agree if he's, you know, raced to a big lead. I agree that if you are, you know, at 10 points and your opponent has claimed four points. But that's what Harimoto did. He claimed the maximum number of points. And then to take a time out, it just came across as... Mm. Um, let me try and figure that out. <laughs> Nine all here. And Shalbury's taking the lead. What do you expect? Wow, Shalbury, he's got a chance here and making it 2 1. Can he do this here? Shawbury. And he's claimed it. Well done there. Anton Shawbury. Fantastic for him. Well, it's a game that started in favor of Harimoto, but then I think now it looks justified, Chess. I think. He saw something in there with uh, Shalbury coming back into this game that concerned him, which is why he went for the So, at the end of the third game, Arthur Shalbury leads. Tomo Kosa Hari Moto, 2-1. After taking the third game, 11-9. So once again, he finds himself trailing here. Tomokazu Harimoto. I think it's an interesting equation. We spoke about, you know, those mental battles being won in that first game. We spoke about how, you know, if there's one thing that Harimoto can do is he can, you know, prime himself up. He can uh, get himself into a really, really big frenzy when it comes to attack. And he can be very aggressive after that. Um, having said that, He's facing a lad who's extremely calm, collected, and cool. Yeah, a motor. Definitely has a few worries, a few doubts in his mind. And that early timeout, I think, would have just displayed that. So. Well, I well, don't know who's mentally stronger, <laughs> yeah, but I definitely can see who's mentally more conditioned. Oh, that's one for the audience. Yeah. <laughs> well done oh. there. Table tennis of the highest quality, these two. Absolutely. What entertainment this is. Fantastic rally there. The great amount of spin being generated as well from a Shalbury. And that's how he excels. Ultimately, of course, Harimoto does get the last word, but absolutely phenomenal rally. And there's so much of quality in that. Oh, so righteous. So enjoyable. These three up here, Matt. Harimoto. Love three. Clips the table. A point back that should make him at least happy. Um, Harimoto was running away with it. Unwilling to share the points. So 
It's 3 1. Harry Motor to serve. Oh, is that a side? Yep, it is a side. Harry Motor has reached the semi finals in 2020. We mentioned that. He got to the final. He was a runner up in Chengdu in 2019. Jabri has got to run 16 in 2015, his best performance. Now, right now, he is doing very well. So it's a big lead that he has picked up there. Created that gap, five points. Shelbury just slowing down a little bit. Let's take that seven. Well, we've not had a single one-sided game yet until now. But I think Harimoto just he's got a he's got a hold on this one. There's no doubt. That's good, isn't it? That should be. Yeah, it is. Shalbury. Oh, that, that just worked beautifully. Covering both ends of the table. Well, let me correct myself. Covering both sides of the table. <laughs> but Harimoto has moved up to eight points. There's no doubt about it. He will want to claim... Well, this second game to level the score here. Yeah, I mean, this one looks very clear, like Harimoto is going to take it. And we're going to get to two all shortly, it would seem, unless Chobri does something very, very special here. Well, some might say you should just start thinking about the next game, conserve your energy. Well, I'd agree with you, Shares. I totally agree with you because you need to pull a rabbit out of the hat here to now overcome where Harimoto is at currently. Uh, you were saying something about doing something, <laughs> something special. special? <laughs> well, he needs a few more before it can become really special. Yeah. But I think just fighting back. But I, I'd go with your, I'd go with your view, um, Shez. Conserve your energy. Yeah, nice. I guess that's not what champions I mean, do. I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying that he's doing that, but that would be what a lot of people might think. It might be worth, just because he was so far behind. Unless you think you could win it. Well, he's only three behind now. This has been a very good run. I think he wow. just heard you, sir. He just and even you. if you lose now, Glenn, you've you've just kind of psychologically put a message out to Harimoto, you know, if you're shobbery. That you're not going to make it easy at all. I'm not exactly. So this is this is key because he was. I think he's got what four in a row now. He's got four in a row. You're absolutely right. It was nine three just a while back. This is tremendous. It's unbelievable. Right. We talked about doing something special, and he's on the cusp of doing that here. Well, oh, he's just taken a different route altogether. Always very, very important to see how some of these lads can generate. Got some amazing moments in the game. Oh, that was hugely important. Well, he needed that. Sigh of relief there. A cry of relief, to yeah. put it better. He needed that desperately. Ah. 
So he had two game points, just one now. This is not over yet for Shalbury in this game. Well, he's taking it. Important for him. Really important there. And I think this last bit needed to finish it off. Decided to power ahead. And that's exactly what he did. Shalbury unable to get that back onto the table. And uh, it's a celebration there. Harimoto knows how important it is. So, so game four. Momokazu Harimoto. Wins it just about 11 9. It's two all now. So Tomokazu Hanimoto may have won that game, but boy, did he make hard work of it. And that would have given a massive boost to Shalbury that he came so close when he had no right to. I think Shalbury's just, uh, you know, stayed very much in the crowd here. He's, he's not the kind of uh, player who, I guess, wants to give up. I mean, you and me were both of the impression that we, we know what the game's going away from us and, you know, let it slide get back with renewed energy for the next game. But no, Shalbury wanted to take the game. And uh, that's that says a lot about, you know, the way that he thinks. He's here in the World Cup. He knows this is a big opportunity. And I think he wants to shine. He's not going to let go easy. Having said that, Harimoto himself is very, very hungry to progress. So interesting here to all. I, we, we knew from the very beginning, Chess, this was not going to be a one-sided game. We knew that these two are quality players, and in the here and now, they are unquality players, and that's what makes the difference. So two all, even Stevens back again, and uh, Shalbury to serve. Well, the noise levels have increased for Tomokazu Harimoto. So the stakes. So every point will be celebrated by Harimoto. He understands how important it is. I remember this is the quarterfinals from here to get closer, to get to the penultimate stage, how important it is. It's quite a journey. And from the eighth that we have today in the men's and the eighth in the women's, only four in each will progress. Harimoto pulling in the point. Gently bit of spin there. Trying to counter that was Shalbury. Straight into the net. Yeah, it's important here for Shalbury because Harimoto going four clear just makes it that much, bit harder for him. Now, at no point in this match has Harimoto front 
this could be his opportunity. He's in in the lead here in the fifth game. <laughs> Missed the chance there, Harimoto. Shalbury drawing level once again. A well matched affair just as we said earlier the previous game was so tight and then Harimoto just raced ahead by about three or four points and uh, Shalbury then caught up by three or four points <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like you know two dancers doing the tango here that's exactly what's happening here's uh, Harimoto up to six now Both athletes very aware of the fact that they need to keep a strong serve. Oh, that's another chance for Harimoto. Decent spin, a lovely counter there from uh, Shalbury. Yeah, Shalbury's turn to miss an opportunity. And also just in front. He's won a ton of points at the net. I'm just trying to figure out. Sh Shalbury is very, very comfortable on that on, on, on the back area. He's very comfortable on the sides at a distance. But just down center where the net is. Um, <laughs> Harry Motors pulled up a lot of points from there. In, in the previous game and in this one as well. This time around, of course, totally beaten there by that placement. Harimoto actually just treating uh, Shalbury to what Shalbury's been giving him mm. for two games. <laughs> it's the exact same spot. In front by two here, Harimoto in game five. This is a very interesting game because whoever gets it, of course, just claims that advantage. Making it, well, helpful in uh, motivating you for the fourth game, which would be the win. Uh, uh, yeah. will oh, find the net. Big. Yeah chance here maybe of taking the lead finally Harimoto Harimoto is excited he, he knows that he's got he knows that he can hold on here and he definitely wants to claim this game uh, a shares because if Shalbury does that it puts Harimoto on the back foot to try and desperately win that next game excellent work there from Harimoto he's got three game points as well And for Shalbury to figure out what exactly needs to be done at this point of time. I'm definitely thinking he's got that look on his face throughout. It's a very sincere look. One saved again. This is great again from Shalbury, and he's just showing, even when the chips are down for him, he still keeps going. Well, he's just a point to drift now. Uh, I do remember this was pretty much mm. the scenario in the previous yeah. game, and then Harimoto did go and win it. I don't think Shalbury wants to see a repeat of that, and I don't think he'll uh, aid in the repeat of that. If he can level.
He's sticking that game again. He's really got someone going on in the crowd there. That he's pointing to. Uh, it's the first time that Harimoto has taken the lead. It's also the first time they've had consecutive wins for either one of these players. That would indicate that he has got some pretty good momentum going here. Well, he's found his Harimoto. rhythm, I think, uh, yeah. Shares, and you can see that in the shots that he's been playing. I do believe he's in a very strong position to claim this and progress. Um, just a slight advantage with Shalbri for now. So at the end of game five, Tomokazu Harimoto has won it 11 9 and he's leading Anton Shalbri 3 2. So we are into the sixth game here. Harimoto leads for the first time 3 2 against Shalbury. And he is uh, on a bit of a roll. Well, it's been a fairly tight affair between uh, these two large chairs. But, as I said earlier, Harimoto just might have that slight edge. Well, you know, when you've, you've got three, you've got one game over your opponent, and then uh, you need to just well, win the fourth game to qualify for the semifinals. I think that desire and the drive is just a bit more because there's no pressure on you, but now there's the desire to finish it off with a win. But Shalbury, for him, there's a the pressure that he has to equalize and bring it up to three games all. Yeah, he missed it completely, didn't he? Oh, disappointment there for Shalbury. I think a bit unfortunate, Harimoto, with the lead. Point at Shalbury. Shalbury's turn now for the timeout. Remember how early Tomokazu Harimoto took his? It's now the turn of the suite. <laughs> One. 
So even the pushes aren't going over for Shawbury at the moment. I think Harimoto's. I mean, you, you look at the two of them right now, and, and this is it's very plain and simple when you think about it, Chess. Harimoto wants. He wants to go in for the win because he knows he's got a game on, a game over uh, Shalbury. Shalbury needs to equalize. So one is playing with basically a little more of drive, and that is Harimoto. And Shalbury is playing with pressure because he has to get back into this. Glenn, if you've noticed in the last three games, Harimoto in the mid game point is dominating now. And Shalbury's having to play catch up every time. Once again, he's five points ahead. Right. Now, it's not necessarily about how you start, and of course, we always talk about how you finish, but Harimoto is setting a base. And when you start that well, it's, it's, you're always playing catch up. It's not easy. And that has happened in the last few games. You're absolutely right about that. And, and credit to Shalbury. He's caught up and chipped away and chipped away at the lead but he's never in a position to try and dominate and no, take he control isn't. so absolutely i think hard, i think harimoto has consciously not allowed him to he's kind of kept him in check <laughs> it's for Shalbury. Very impressive players here. Yeah. 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 The uh, unforced errors for Shawbury. I think Harimoto is also beginning to turn it on with the serve. He's getting stronger now with each, uh, with each and every exchange. We always knew that he was going to be, well, the more active, or the more aggressive of the two yeah. contenders. So now he is putting himself in an excellent position. Lead by five, three required to get into the semi-finals tomorrow. You can't help but feel a tad bit bad for Anton Schalbury. But having said that, let's not forget, this has been a complete package, this game. And Harimoto, well, has got the edge mentally. And I, I think that's, that's a big one here. Shalbury now just four points behind. But if Anton Shalbury can hold on, Chess, mm. if he can win this game, I will stand where I am in my position and take a bow. Out of respect. Which is good. I mean, he's, he's displayed some great moments, but yes, Harimoto just running away with it now. He's on to nine points. Yeah. And he's making a quick Chess. You notice one thing, and I don't know whether this, had, this came in a little after the timeout, Harimoto's making it very... He's not letting those uh, exchanges develop into rallies. He's finishing it as soon as he can. Well, Shalbury's helping that as well, isn't he? And that's match point now. Six match points for Tomokazu Harimoto. Bit unfortunate for Shalbury. That look on his face says it all. That's Tomokazu Harimoto into his third World Cup semi final. He was under a bit of pressure early on. Anton Shalbury played his part, got it off so well. It's the last Harimoto that saw him through. Well, absolutely, yes, but I do believe that that last uh, game should have played out slightly better. Uh, I, I think, you know, um, Harimoto actually totally uh, dominated. Uh, Shalbury with the play and it was a finish not the kind of damp ending that we were expecting but more power to Harimoto and well played Anton Shalbury you want to get through the score chess and that's exactly how the last point played out there was a bit of net uh, interference and then that finish from uh, Harimoto was expecting a lot more but I think Shalbury, rather than fight tooth and nail to uh, 
save a point. I think got a bit defensive with his play. And that's when Harimoto just zoomed in. So Tomokazu Harimoto beats Anton Shabri. 9-11, 11-7, 9-11, 11-9, 11 11-4, 11 reeled off the last three games. He wins by four games to two. He's into the World Cup semi-final. Looking back at these highlights here, Glenn, and it was such a good start, wasn't it, for... Anton Shawbury. Very positive, great body language, looking extremely confident. Uh, that's how Shawbury started off the first. And you noticed that his body language, his movements just changed as this game progressed. And Harimoto really, on the other hand, went the other way, kept getting stronger and more confident. This entire Shawbury, uh, you know, first two games, um, it was just a bit, it was a bit hard to see that. And I wonder whether there was a battle going on in his mind about this. Uh, it certainly seems like it, yeah. But it was a massive change. And you can see Harimoto. Every game, stronger, more yeah. confident, more determined. Strength, didn't he? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And it was a fine ending for him. A very one sided last game there. As we uh, just look at that scoreline, that last game summed it up. Every other game was very, very close indeed. Let's hear now from our winner. Here is Tomokazu. Harimoto. Uh, congratulations to Tomokazu and Endo didn't make it easy to you. Uh, what's your secret to winning this game? おめでとうございます。10 Key light in the fourth game, I trailed behind nine to one, but then I managed to come back. So eventually, winning the second game, winning the fourth game, and tying at two to two has been significant to my victory today. And the uh, World Cup is one of the biggest event of the table tennis. So how do you feel to play in the World Cup in Macau? Macau, ni kite World Cup tuyu oki na budai de tadakatte go kanto o okikase kudasai. そうですね、やっぱりオリンピック I've been very pleased to have this opportunity to fight here, and also I'm very happy to have win these matches. The arena, as well as the atmosphere, has been excellent. I've been approaching my matches with a grateful mindset, and I'll do my best uh, looking forward to the quarter, uh, the semifinals. Okay, thank you, Tomokato. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give the respect to Tomokato. Looking at the brackets here, he is the first through to the semi-finals, Tomokazu Harimoto, and uh, he will wait for the winner of the Kaoyan or Fan Dong. That will be fascinating to watch.
Harimoto walks in here, the women's uh, quarterfinals. She beat Mo Zhang 3-1 in her first result. And, uh, yeah, then followed that up with... Next up, Adriana Dia, representing Puerto Rico. In fact, that was on her left, yes, she's going straight through. Adriana Dia is from Puerto Rico. Uh, beat Fuyu of Portugal 3-1. Hannah Goda of... Uh, Egypt 4-0, and then Sofia Polkanova of Austria 4-0, the round of 60. Just to complete those results for you, Miwa Harimoto, after beating Mozang, 3-1 uh, beating her, and then she beat Kim Na Yong of uh, Korea 3-1 as well in the group stages. And then, uh, yeah, that was the group stages, excuse me, I should say, 4-0, she beat her uh, yesterday in one of the upsets of the tournament she created one of the stories didn't she by uh, beating Wang Yi Di 4-1 convincingly one of China's big four Wang Yi Di's had a bit of a rough time of, of late Miwa Harimoto and compounding that remember how good she was at the World Team Championships recently, where they, Japan placed so much responsibility on her shoulders, where she played in the deciding match against Chen Meng and beat her in the first game. And it looked like she might be Japan's hero, but sadly wasn't to be for her. Explosive, really, really aggressive, and just like her brother, she's only 15 years old. Ah, uh, shes. I have no words <laughs> for that. <laughs> and to take on, you know, a really big seeds uh, to win those games. Uh, she's way more mature than she appears to be in terms of her age. Uh, it seems to be a hard to trait. <laughs> it certainly is. I think it comes from the mom and dad. Uh, they've had very, very good influences and very, very good atmosphere at home. For exactly. Sure. Well, former players himself, mom played for China. And uh, at the other end of the spectrum, of course, uh, a lady who's made uh, table tennis a pretty much a staple diet in her country. And uh, people now actually, you know, take up the sport even more so, uh, thanks to her. Just to complete things there, Adrian Diaz, 23. Currently 10th in the world, she's been a bit better at 9th earlier this year. As for Mima Harimoto, she is uh, currently playing at her best ranking. Diaz has uh, pretty much won everything there is to win at a Pan American level. But uh, she's also gone beyond that, and I think that's been a really game. important thing for her. One love. Yeah, what's important is that, yeah, she's got beyond the Pan American stage, having won the Pan American Games, the Pan American Championships, Pan American Cup. Central American Caribbean Games. She's also won tournaments outside of that. And uh, yeah, for someone to be able to come out and yeah, really fly the flag for or the, be the standard bearer for Pan American table tennis is huge. Mima Harimoto. I mean, precocious beyond her years as well. 
She's taking a 3 0 lead to. 3 love lead to beat Wang Yi Di. I think is just such a great achievement for her. One. They have met once before, these two. Adriana Diaz beat Harimoto at the WTT contender Muscat. 3 2. Close affair. Lovely counter there from Harimoto. What a thrusting rally. Well, she looked like she might be in some trouble, Harimoto. Then recovered brilliantly. Well, I think her coverage of, you know, the area is, is absolutely fantastic, Mio Harimoto. Um, so nimble. She's extremely fast. She's got absolutely brilliant footwork for a 15-year-old. Um, it's no surprise that she has taken the lead here, and she's three points ahead of the Ads. One, five. I think the Ads just struggling a tad early part of the game mm. uh, to get into her rhythm. Uh, I've seen a few uh, parts where she's almost, well, well, just stalled a little bit. I think she's still getting into her groove. Amiva Harimoto, well, I think she got in there from the first serve itself. One, six. I was telling you about Miwa Harimoto, where she was very much entrusted by Team Japan. So disciplined. Responsibility on our shoulders in that World Championship final, China against Japan. And she's forcing a lot of errors from Adriana Diaz, and I do believe that uh, Adriana Diaz, we do know the kind of uh, you know quality she brings to the sport. She too is a bright spark, uh, but. Uh, I do believe at this point of time, Miwa Harimoto just looking a little bit quicker. And that has a great part to play in this. A uh, mock pass there from <laughs> Ultimately, it is Harimoto who races ahead. So it's 8 2 now for her. Yeah, she was uh, retreating quite quickly in that. Adrian Diaz. 2 9. And, you know, in a, blank, a, bl a blink of an eye, Glenn, this is almost done, this first game. Excellent start here from Mima Harimoto. Ten, two. Well, very confident. Uh, and we spoke about, uh, we're actually going to neglect the age now for the simple reason that I was reading up how, you know, brother Tomokazu really, really looks after her. And he doesn't, he said it, he doesn't look after her because it's his kid sister, but because he respects her as a fellow paddler and he wants to see her become the best. Ten, three. First of eight game points is saved by Adriana Diaz. So, Miwa Harimoto has taken that first game and she's done it very, very comfortably. Excellent start from her. Very focused, total concentration for Miwa Harimoto and uh, won that point fairly easy. Uh, yes, the net. So, at the end of the first game, Miwa Harimoto wins it 11-3.
second game here to serve La Vol. You know, uh, she just looks so impressive, hasn't she, Miwa Harimoto, so far? Absolutely. I mean, we spoke of maturity, but even skill. Love one. She's nice. just fantastic. I mean, she's been on a roll ever since. Now, you look, you're playing a, 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 you know, your opponent is more experienced, your opponent is more, but, yeah. One, one. Well, very, very disciplined. Um, I, I, I really have no words for that, but, you know, at that age, I keep saying it, but to be so disciplined, to be so very, very professional uh, in your approach to the game, all the focus and concentration with every single exchange she's had. Two, one. Yeah, it's almost scary because she's that young and there's still much more to come from her. Imagine, imagine actually sparring with her. I mean, she whoop you and me together. <laughs> Let's In no time. <laughs> One thing. She looks to be able to sight all. Big caution there from Sir. Oh. One. I want to finish. That's how you do it. She's just starting to dominate this game, isn't she? I think you, you already said it from the first game, Glenn, that right from the start, she won it. And that Diaz was... No, I just got to say that she was on the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, figuratively, all of it. Absolutely fantastic work being done here by Miwa Harimoto. She's had a few moments, but... Diaz, we'll have to dig deep for this one. I don't think Adriana Diaz wants oh, to lose this game. Good. There it is. She's just making short work of most of her opponent's efforts, and it's it's just a bit concerning. And if I was, of course, in uh, Diaz's corner right now, I would be concerned. Three. Another fine move there. They are set the net. And I said this earlier, Shares. I don't think I'd be concerned because she's winning the points. I'd be concerned because she's winning them effortlessly. She doesn't have to work for her points. She's just finishing, well, each and every exchange really fast. Yeah, that 4 1 feet of Wang Yidi was just so impressive. Yes, yeah, gets the benefit of this, sir. Uh, Want to just maintaining momentum throughout that match, keeping her cool under immense pressure. Four, five. And we said, actually, compared to my usual performance, I felt evenly matched with my opponent during rallies. That's with your Wang Yidi yesterday, which I reckon contributed to the most of my victory. And then she said, previously, it's like I had about a 30% advantage while my opponent had a 70% advantage both in terms of rally performance and points gained. But in that match against Wang Yidi, she said she was able to engage in rallies with minimal errors. And it was great that she executed the tactics that she'd been working on meticulously from her service and received to third ball and fifth ball attacks. She said she's going to put her best foot forward and fight one match at a time. She's striving to play her best while thinking carefully about how to play during each match. This is the words of a 15-year-old. <laughs> it's, it's strange, isn't it? It, it? What's even more strange is that when she has opponents who are in the top 10, she gets... Five, this has been better from Diaz, but Miwa Harimoto has maintained the lead. I think Diaz had a few good moments in this game, but it's very important for her to really try and win this game, because I do believe if you're going to let Harry Moto get away, the result would be probably a repeat of yesterday. Six, seven. What's even more admir admirable, um, Shares, is you know, when most youngsters at this age would be doing what they normally do, goofing off, gaming, spending time with friends, 
It's a lot of sacrifices that go into this, and for a 15-year-old, it means a lot. Now, slam that in. No way back. Triana Diaz in this one. It's now two points back again for Miwa Harimoto. Just had to take that. Served up nice and easy. There's a trademark punch from Arjuna Diaz. He's played it a few times, but he's not given it too many winners just yet. It does this time. Just the right amount of push she has, isn't it, Chess? Well, I think she did attempt two or three of them, but I think she's settled in a little more now, and the scoreline actually tells us that much for Adriana Diaz. That is fantastic. You can just see the uh, frustration building up for Adriana Diaz. We just realized one thing. When you look at the styles of, you know, the Harimoto siblings, and there's a great influence on Miwa's style, definitely, uh, you know, by her brother. Um, also imagine the kind of time that they would have spent the sparring. Yeah. Or actually, you know, I mean, you That's have... Very good point. You have siblings who are, you know, two... Seven, ten. Two were professional players, world-class contenders. And, uh, but there's an element of difference. Uh, Tomokazu Harimoto has, of course, a very aggressive, very, very jumpy, very uh, different sort of style in, in his approach. But Miwa Harimoto is smooth. She's fast. Um, she covers great ground. All the three game points converted at the first one. Uh, Miwa Harimoto. So this kind of puts the pressure on Adriana Diaz and that last bit will just tell us a story once again. That lovely backhand just generates the right amount of spin to be into the rallies. Ah, chess is looking to be a fast one. Yeah, right now, Mio Harimoto in control. 11 7 in game two. She's leading 2 0 against Adriana Diaz. Third game, Harimoto to serve, love all. She's looking very, very dominant at the moment. Miwa Harimoto. Diaz would be at least pleased that she's just got better, but she needs to get game in the bag, Glenn. Well, she's just used Diaz's ploy against her. Absolutely brilliant jab there from her. And, and you just look at that. Well, she's just going from strength to strength. Um, one, one. Well, two games ahead. I don't think Adriana Diaz is too comfortable, but we know her pedigree as well. We know, you know, what she's done and the fact that she's got great experience. One, two. But at this point of time in this World Cup, I think Adriana Diaz would also have glimpses of herself when she was a youngster and she was rising up the ranks, making waves. But there's always going to be another. Oh, great reactions there from Diaz. Three. Animoto, too good. I'll tell you what, with the, the way she disposed of ED yesterday, Mimo Animoto might really start fancy her chances. He has a potential meeting with either Hina Hayata, her 
compatriot or Wang Man Yu. And are we going to have a timeout here? I Time think Diaz on. needs one. Yeah, we are. Now, I didn't see earlier whether... Yeah, it's not her dad, Vladi Diaz, who's there. Four, one. Stop. So back after the timeout, uh, which was called by Adriana Diaz, Eva Harimoto to serve, she leads four, one. Well, these could be really concerning times for, you know, Adriana Diaz as well. well she's eight years the senior over her opponent. One, six. Right now, she is getting around, orchestrating every single move on this table currently and dictating terms is Miwa Harimoto. Seven. Just drawing out as many errors as she can from her opponent. It's now 7-1, and that's another huge lead, Chez. It's not something that I think uh, Adriana Diaz was expecting to fall behind with six points. This is a big moment here now. 8-1. And she needs to cut that sort of stuff out. She's in trouble. Got to dig very, very deep here, Adriana. Concerning moments for her. She wants to stay in this World Cup. Not looking good for Diaz. It's going to be three straight games. And here we're talking about a world number 12 facing a world number 10. And that's when you know she has always go back to what you always said. Um, what's on paper is not necessarily what happens well, in the arena. Nine game points here for Harimoto. And by the way, Diaz has previously got to the round of 16 in the 2020 World Cup. Not going to happen here if this continues. Ten, two. So Diaz pulling one point in. And that's how you finish it, three straight games. Um, wow. I, I hate saying this, uh, Shares, but just look at that, the way she's gone about this. Look at that finish. She isn't just beating Diaz. She's decimating her. It's already straight games, three easy wins. Oh, that's total destruction that we're looking at right in front of our eyes. Well, wow, this is uh, fantastic for Viva Harimoto. 11-2 in the third game. Threes are up already.
time. Glenn, at the moment, can you see Adriana Diaz Austin. come back? Because, Diaz I mean, Mingla Arimoto has been dominant in pretty much every facet of this match. I think, I think in the current form that Miwa Harimoto is, uh, I shudder. I, I, I think it's tough. I mean, look at that fluidity. It's mm. just... I never ever thought that I'd be looking at a really young player and seeing that time and time again. One. It was close. Had that been on the table, that could well have been a second point. It's going to be an almighty comeback required here from Diaz. Well, when you're three games up, that's already half the battle won. Let's okay, let me one. rephrase that. Three quarter. Well, we, we, you know, you and I were talking yesterday about the men's round of 16. There wasn't a single one where it was a 4 0 or a, even a 4 1. One. But in the women's side of things, it's a different story. Well, while we credit uh, Miwa Harimoto, let's not take anything away from Adriana Diaz. It just isn't her day today. It's not about anything else. <laughs> there were two four zeros and four four ones in the round of 60. It's a very, very different story in the women's side of things compared to uh, the men's that we were commentating on. It is, it is. So there's that part. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think, one of the rare times that, it might even be the first time, in fact, that she's taken the lead, Adriana Diaz. So we were really fortunate to have those super long, you know, hard-fought battles uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were covering uh, mainly the men's, but... Yeah, we have Harimoto tying up back again. It's three all. Yeah, to get the better this time. Well, that's good coming from her. She's got to pick up a game. Now, let's not forget it's not going to be easy. Diaz has got to win three straight games if she wants to stay on route to qualification for the next Five, stage. Three. So, Diaz leads 5-3. Performing much better now. Make that 6 3. Well, this could it be the start of the comeback? Well, I think it's great to see Diaz. Two, wow. Well, getting in, she's, she's all of a sudden. It. But three games on. Oh, there's that punch again. It's still going to be tough, Shes. It's going to be very tough. tough. But she's got this four point lead. This is. About as good as it's been so far for her. I think, I think mm. that all of a sudden, Miwa Harimoto. Wow. She's looked so powerful, so dominant. Because she was, she was in cruise control. Yeah. And then you suddenly have the brakes put on. That's going to take her just a little bit of time to get back to her normal self. Eight, four. There she does. When she's in full flow with that punch, very few can withstand the Diaz punch. It's good to see Diaz come back in. It would have been, well, really, really upsetting if she had to go down to a nil finish, go love finish in the games. 
You would not want to finish. Well, four games to nothing. And a chance here for Diaz to plan her comeback. Take the first step. Finishes that emphatically. Well, that's for all the points that she dropped. <laughs> he has one back at you, says Harimoto. And I think that one by default, Diaz wasn't expecting to Ten, lob six. that up. So now four game points for Adriana Diaz. Diaz has a big following too, uh, doesn't she? Yeah, she has, massive. And she's got so many cheers. She's also and been in China a lot before, so they're very familiar with her. They like her. And this was quick, absolutely quick once again. Oh, she, could she mount something here, Harimoto? Trying to finish this in four. She knows she can't risk. She wants to finish it as quickly as she can. Eight, ten. Ah, yeah, she wasn't best pleased with that. Well, the uniqueness of Adriana Diaz is, uh, you know, we've often seen that she has, she comes in waves. Sometimes she's <laughs> a bit of a tsunami, and other times she's just a docile, smooth wave, which is still trying to find its way to show. And I, I think that that could be a bit of a worry for her in the year and now. Well, we're going to go to a fifth game at least because Diaz has pulled one back here, much to her relief. I think I think this is good. This is what should have been happening in game number one. It's three one. We've got to wait for Diaz's confidence. Arimoto gracefully. She's got to move on to the next one. So Azura Diaz has taken the fourth game, 11-8, but she's really three one here again. New Arimoto. Fifth game, Harimoto to serve, love all. So a rejuvenated Adriana Diaz perhaps, but can she keep it going? She needs to be perfect now, win the next three games. That's a tough, tough ask against an impressive Miwa Harimoto. Love one. So Diaz just breaking back. She's got slightly under the skin of uh, Mia Harimoto. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she dealt with the punch this time, Mia Harimoto. But it was a follow up that was tough for her. There's the punch. And this is one of the unique things where, uh, you know, experience plays a part, right? One. Well, you don't want to get into those rallies, and that's where Harimoto really shines all the time. Yeah, it's very clear, of course, Diaz went toe-to-toe -to -toe with her, but at the end, Harimoto just claiming it. It's 2-1. One. One, yeah, it's uh, incredible how the momentum shifts like this.
two, three. So Hariboto finding a way back. Lost the trail a little bit in the previous game. I was just saying how experience really plays a part here, you know, and it, and it tells you how to tackle the situation that you're in. And that's where I think youngsters do struggle just a tad bit, uh, Shez, because they haven't been through the motions this year. But I don't think Harimoto will need to do that here. Oh, she's just been impressive. Playing against one of the finest and probably one of the most popular uh, players in the world. Also, pretty much the poster girl of, uh, of table tennis for so many reasons. Harimoto now in front. It's been a while since that happened, midway through the last game. A little bit of deception play there by Adriana Diaz. She was shaping up as if she was going to play a booming forehand. Oh, very well done. Very well done. Lovely touch there from Diaz. Fault. Four, five. Well, oh, quickly called on the fault. Has to be straight. And it wasn't deemed so by the umpire. Oh, shake of the head. Well, she accepts it gracefully. Yep, just gets on with it. Yeah. That should be the case. Because she cannot claim that she's been playing. Five. Like what we saw on the men, she can't say I've been playing for 20 years. No one's called that. <laughs> Also, whatever you say isn't going to change. Yeah, oh, she could say, I've been playing for 20 months, nobody's called that. <laughs> that might be just about right for her, yeah. Five, She's not willing to let this go, she has not as easy as those first three games, because Diaz is now really pulling out everything that she can that's in her armor or in Arsenal to throw it out onto the table. Pushed there to the back of the table. Six, six. Well, this is the way I thought the first game should have played out. Mm. Uh, yeah, I agree. I thought it might have been closer. I also get the feeling, you know, when you're watching, you know, even the sequence of shots. Diaz now a lot more comfortable. She was just taken by surprise. And for those first three games, Harimoto did not let up on the pace. She just kept coming at her. I think by the time Diaz figured it out, it was the fourth game. Seven, six. Seven, six. Now too clear. Uh, can she convert? Good reactions, but not quite good enough. Time for Harimoto to take a time out now.
seven, eight. So that was a big moment for Miwa Harimoto, two away from finishing this off. 4 1. Just clips the net, you may have heard that. She had Diaz on the ropes, perhaps. Well, I really um, j just look at the way this has gone, and now you know you're on the verge of winning the match. You you've got the net interference in there, <laughs> and but just to accept it, yeah, you know, and carry on. Just move on. It's very very admirable. <laughs> Eight, ten. Three, two match points then for Miwa Harimoto. This has not been a good day for Adriana Diaz at the office. She says, looks like she's met up with the hurricane. And she knows it. And she saved these match points. No, she can't. Miwa Harimoto is through to her first ever World Cup semi final at the tender age of. 15. Definitely, she has probably one of the best matches we've seen in the whole tournament so far. She, it was really total destruction here, and of one of the finest players in the world, you think about it. Viva Harimoto, that discipline, her temperament, or just everything about her. She's absolutely more power to her. She's delighted the audiences and us as well. Fabulous, and hats off. Fantastic performance there from Miwa Harimoto against Adriana Diaz. It's a great start to the day for the Harimoto family. Both of them are through to the semi-finals. Miwa Harimoto of Japan beats Puerto Rico's Adriana Diaz, 11-3, 11-7, 11-2, 8-11, 11-8. She wins by four games to one. Just looking back at the story of this match again and she just came in so focused and zeroed in on what she needed to do uh, and uh, i think diaz was just taken by surprise because diaz has beaten her before last year alone so much has changed since then i think you know a term that you mentioned earlier really nails it very well and uh, we were chatting about um you were and i was asking what do you like about her and you said something consistent that's what she's been through this entire game she just kept coming. She did nothing that was wrong. She was tough, she was serious, and she was technically well, almost. Um, but take her off that arena, but she's talking to a coach, and she's just a normal teenager back again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's, the coach is beyond her years, and everything she did just seemed to turn to gold. You can't even look look at her as a teenage game because we watch the game as a professional and it's just look at the scoreline in the yeah. third game. She's getting better and better. But we also have to give credit to Adriana Diaz. She bounced back from the disappointment of the third game. To actually start taking control in the fourth. She just couldn't maintain that. But I think here's where uh Harimoto won the battle, right? She won those first three games, and that really put a spoke in the wheel. Because if Diaz had come back in the second game to win it, it would have probably panned out very differently. Yeah. Two, one. Through. But what what a delightful match! Uh, exciting start in, in the women's uh, quarterfinals, and this is perfect. Matter of fact, this match played out at the end. We're going to perfect finish as well. Okay, well from Miwa Harimoto, she's won this very comfortably actually, and against a player who's higher ranked than she is. So let's hear now from our winner, another Harimoto. This time. It's Miwa. Uh, congratulations on your great win, Miwa. And uh, what did you make of your match today? Thank you. 
、えっと、自分が2対3で負けていたので今回はその試合を重点的に反省をして、まあ、今日の出だしからしっかりこう、うん、コーチと一緒に考えてきたことを実行することができて、まあ、あの途中にセット取られてしまったんですけど、まあ、すぐ切り替えて。最後までやりきることができたのでよかったです。Uh, the last time I played Adriana, I was defeated two to three. So this time I made a full reflection on the previous match. And before the outside of the match, I discussed with my coach to see how we can execute our tactics effectively. Although my opponent took one side during the match, but I managed to adjust my mindset immediately. And I'm very pleased to have won this. And tomorrow in the semi final. So, what's your goal in this World Cup Macau 2024? Yes. In the beginning, it's been my goal to compete one match at a time at this World Cup. Whether I could make it to the champion wasn't so much on my mind. So I'll focus on the match ahead and see how I can approach it in a way that contributes to my progress and growth. Okay, thank you, Miwa. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Zhang Benmei. Thank you. 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 So mature beyond her years, and uh, very focused, I think. An impressive young lady there, Hadi Boto, and she's the first, like a brother, to secure a semi-final spot in the women's singles, and she'll play either Ita Hayata or Wang Wan Yu. Very interesting that you say that the siblings got the party started. <laughs> they did, they really, really did. Well, she's uh, done well. Sit back and relax a little bit now and see what happens the rest of the day. Thank you. 那么波仔在稍后还会有很多的福利会一一的送给大家，所以说我们也希望现场的朋友们在稍后运动员出场之时，准备好你们最为热情和热烈的掌声，一起来为二零二四年澳门国际乒联男子与女子世界杯带来最棒的观众的气氛，你们能做到吗？谢谢，非常感谢大家。那稍后我们就一起期待精彩比赛的正式上演。同样，我们也要谢谢波仔，感谢你来到现场和大家一起见面。
and gentlemen, let's welcome players and umpires. First, Shinsuke Togami, representing Japan. Shouzhen Huanying, from Japan, Hu Shang Sun Fu. Shinsuke Togami coming through for the men's quarterfinal match now next here at the World Cup and Macau 2024. Oh, no. 3-1 and then Dan Jones. 3-1 and then yesterday, what a result against Omar Asar to go through. Comfortable against Omar Asar overall, you'd have to say. Then Ma Long, the GOAT, the Dragon, the Dictator from China. Aditya Sarin and Edward Lee, he won 4-0. Each then very good match against Felix Lebron. We enjoyed that one, didn't we? Oh, we loved it. We absolutely loved it. Uh, you know, I'm just going to talk about that match for the simple reason that, you know, the way that Malong uh, approached it and played it and the respect that he gave Felix Lebron, even though, you know, he's, he's he played him before um, and even though he knew at some point of time that he was going to win it, although he was stressed a tad bit. Uh, you know, uh, one of my, uh, one of the people that's close to me was talking about, you know, table tennis and I was talking about her favorite players and she asked me, why do you like Malong so much? And I said, it's not because he's just a great player, it's the entire package. He respects every opponent he plays, he's got great temperament, he's he's a humble guy. Well, he doesn't show it, but he's an extremely humble guy and you know that, Chess. You've met him, you know, personally, you've encountered him. Um, he is the real package, or what I would call, not the poster boy, but the role model for all table tennis players right now. Today, what's going to be the state of affairs? I do think Tagami can trouble him. Uh, will it be as much as LeBron? I don't know. Because I think what, what uh, Tagami does not have to that extent is that ability to keep coming at you again and again and again without a pause. Uh, Tagami is fast. Tagami is lethal. But you're still playing against somebody who's got wisdom, experience, and can pull a rabbit out of the hat every time we go. Shunsuke Tagami, 22 years of age. He is currently 26th in the world. The mighty Ma Long, who is currently fourth in the world. He was, of course, a former world number one for a record amount of time. As someone who has won everything there is to win in table tennis. Will he be there for the Olympics? Miguel Lagos is our umpire. Will be his last World Cup. Tagami, a little bit higher than being Greek in the world. Uy is out. Higher. He is Greek. The WT contender Doha semi final. This is best performance this year. He has also been with Team Japan for a while now and won the bronze medal. World champs uh, this year. Oh, sorry, 2022. And in the biggest performances, Asian Championship in 2021, he has uh, won a bronze. But Marlon has won two World Cups. And uh, he'll be hoping to make it a third, going to a very rare breed of three time winners. Only Han Jung Dong has, or Fan Dong and Marlin, excuse me, I should take, have won it four times. Well, that would be definitely 
you know, on the list, on the wish list, or basically on the mission list for, uh, yeah, Malong doesn't have a uh, uh, wish list, he has mission list. So it could be on the mission list for him. But uh, can Togami put the brakes on that? I think that's, uh, that's a big question. Um, we, we do know that the favorite for this game would definitely be Malong. He's also got the backing of the entire crowd. I'm sure that players like even Togami have grown up watching him. Mm. But all said and done, on that given day when you're playing, uh, you know, in, in the World Cup and you're playing to get to the semi-final, it's going to be interesting. And I don't think it's going to be as easy as it seems. So Togami will start off the action. Yeah, he's the lowest ranked player in the competition. Shunsuke Togami. So he's defied the odds a little bit. Massive roll. Every point that he wins now will be greeted like that. Now along with a whopping 49 senior titles. Though interestingly, he has not won a single one since it became WTT, World Table Tennis. One, two. Togami holding his own to start off with. I think, Shez, there's a, there's a slight catch there. Uh, Malong will want to complete it, to round it off. 50. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to have the half century, isn't it? Played 18 matches this year, won 13 of them. You see quite the force from yesteryear. I think, uh, that's his, uh, not quite. Pagami's got off to a good start, actually. He leads 4-1. Yeah, his win rate this year is 64%. But well, this is a man whose overall career win rate, Marlong, is 85%. So, a little different now, of course. Times have changed a bit. But where it is so impressive against non-Chinese players, he has a 93% win rate, which is absolutely phenomenal. Also, his... Record against lower ranked players is also amazing. In 497 matches against non or uh, lower ranked players, he's only lost 46 of them. That's less than 10%. That's a lot, isn't it? So, That's you know, a terrific the odds are stacked well in his favor here. It's Togami, who is winning here by three. Good work here from Togami. Down by Malong. They appreciate that. Malong slowly settling in as we can see. He's, uh, you know, the shots are coming in. Getting on to that decisive well period. Absolutely marvelous, isn't it? The way that he just turned that around was entirely in control of that whole rally, if you ask me. 6 3. Looking to go down the line there, Togami. If he goes long. You know, whenever you get into us with uh, Amar Long and he's on the forehand, 
It's a bit of a tough battle. And you know pretty much what to expect. Now 4-6. Three-point cushion here for Togami in this first game. Probably need a little bit more against someone like Ma Long. <laughs> How well he comes to the table. How quick he gets to those shallow shots, half longs. Makes it look so easy. A oh, wonderful bit there. Just generating that right amount of spin to draw to come the ball away totally from Tagami. 7-5 Tagami to serve. Tagami will get ahead here. It's 8-5. You know, there's a strange bit about Malong, uh, you know, that we, we found out over time, uh, Shez. And he's one of those few players who does not remember the matches he's won. But he remembers <laughs> practically every match he's lost. I don't know whether it's because that's a smaller number. Well, it's a much smaller number, I think, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's just easier to do. Five, ten. Well, it's amazingly enough, Togami, the underdog here, has five game points. I think Tagami is going to take this first one. There's no doubt about it. But it, it hasn't been any flash from him. I think Marlong really hasn't stepped up his game as yet. Game well, fantastic. And very comfortable, uh, you know, first game for uh, Shinsuke Tagami. Nothing special about it. He's just done, got all the basics right, Tagami. Wonderful work there from Shunsuke Togami. 11-5 in the first game against Malong. to serve not all now, let's see how Malong reacts to that first game loss <laughs> there's a uniqueness about Malong after all those years of playing all those victories and you know all the accolades um, he takes well a win or a defeat with the same grain of salt but that, that's one of the reasons why he doesn't remember uh, you know how many games he's won and there we have a familiar sight <laughs> and how he's just he's just amazing isn't it? it was so nice to see him in the stands when two of his players were playing and he was actually enjoying the game without that rhythmic clapping one two 
Kagami. Kagami playing, well, everything right. Very heavily reliant on his, well, backhand, Kunzuke Tagami. And that's a clean finish, just as I said that, uses a forehand winner. Here's the odd bit, uh, Shez. Yesterday when playing LeBron. When playing LeBron, LeBron is a very different player. He's a lot mm. faster, he's jumpy, he's unpredictable. Kagami is more or less predictable because he sticks to a similar shot selection, but yet Malong has struggled a little bit against him, and that's quite odd when you think about it. He uses the same backhand finish, he uses a similar forehand finish, it's not really that hard to read his game. But he's just trying not to make any mistakes, and that's what Kagami, I think, is kind of disciplined with here so far today. Yeah. Now, Malang's got to win this. He has to win this to make a contest out of it. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been interesting to see Malong so far. That's a typical Malong fist bump. A couple of steps back. Well, now Malong has drawn level, but can he push on now? Chinese officials in their stance. Well, there's so much uh, ahead this year besides the many, uh, you know, table tennis events. Let's not forget the Olympics as well. Better here, three points in a row for Malong. And we're going to see a lot of these uh, lads, there's an act in there, uh, representing their countries. The Lebanon brothers really excited about it. And that is the hometown. Six, three. Yeah, you have for Garmin moving back and forth. Not easy at all for the guy. For Garmin, he is, he is a very fit athlete. He's been able to get most of his shots right. But here, of course, it was definitely Marlong controlling this rally. There's <laughs> no doubt about it. He was dictating terms which way it was going to go. And then finally, let's have the last say. Still going here. Oh. <laughs> there was uh, plenty of kick on that one. It was rising. I think the round of 16 was Lob Dejas. <laughs> we saw so many of them yesterday. It was just amazing. Yeah. And winners coming from those, it was just outstanding. I mean, who turns a defensive move into a winning one or into an attack mode? So, Malong on seventh, Agami on fourth. Make that eight. Malong, the fans there. And uh, yesterday, Chez was just talking about their, you know, their T-shirts and how uh, Fan Zhendong, of course, wears a blue one, and how the rest of the Chinese team wear those pink and yellows. And for Malong, it is so pronounced that color. Up to nine now. Malong beginning to look very strong. Yeah, this is good for him. Great position to make it one all.
It certainly made him dance for that one. There's no doubt about it. So Marlong beginning to control this game. And here he is. Six game points now. Tagami fighting back. He says, I'm not done yet. And it's all square now as Malong takes it 11 5. And uh, now it's even Stevens and game on back again here uh, in the second quarterfinal in the men's. Yeah, that one was always going to cause problems. And Malong, for him, again against Kitagami 11 5. Oh, third way to Third game now, Marlong has looked pretty good in that second game. Let's see how it plays out in the third. One love. Very interesting, Tagami will want to come back in a fiery manner that he started off that first game. Will Marlong allow it? It certainly looks like what well, we did think yeah. initially that it might have been not a one-sided affair, not taking anything away from anyone, but we thought that Malong might have been the favorite here. Having said that, Tagami is making it very, very difficult. Yeah. And it's now two points to Shinsuke Tagami. Points beginning to come in slowly and surely three points in the bag for Tagami. Almost losing his balance here. Now Tagami has raced ahead to a 4 1 lead. Yeah, very good from Tagami to bounce back so quickly after the disappointment of the last game. Whoa! 1 5. Goes on to five points. It's certainly turning out to be one. Well, battle of sorts here, there's no doubt about it. Six one. I can't believe what I'm looking at. Yeah. 
What's going on here? This is uh, a bit unbelievable, really. Well, it's not the we're so used to seeing. Oh, Bob winner there, lovely backhand. Just the right amount needed to. Well, get the better of Tagami. Well, it's a bit odd when you think about it, as Shez had mentioned this earlier. You know, Malong has won in the two events that these two have clashed. There's such a difference between them. Malong, 12 years the senior of Tagami, and then let's not forget that ranking 21 spots ahead of Shinsuke Tagami. But Tagami is such an such a unique player. He's got the skills. He's got a very different approach to this. He's got game. arms and everything going all over the place. Everything. He has, and uh, just makes it look like it's a natural, you know, part of what he's supposed to do. So 4-6 Malong. Tagami is called in for a timeout. So back to the action uh, right here at the ITTF Men's World Cup being played in Macau 4. This is the Galaxy Arena. It's an absolutely stunning place. I mean, if you like uh, hues of blue and if, like me, you like anything to do with the gaming world, well, it really looks like a gaming arena. Absolutely fantastic. Love it. Love everything right down to the design of the tables. Oh, after yeah, that yeah. timeout. And there's a reason why, of course, he, he did take that time out because Malong was just beginning to draw those points in. And I think Malong has just fine, finally got into that bit of a comfort zone and he started to knock those shots back. So it's 5 6, Malong to serve. Go! 7 5. Dummy. On to seven points. This is music to his ears. Can he keep it going? Big question here. Consistency is the key. Well, I believe that too, um, Shez. It's going to be very, very important to see whether, uh, you know, Tagami can make it count. Now, there's distance between them. There's daylight. Problems for my long. That's the jump her back. There's still two points ahead, but my long with the service. Can he get on par? But the last thing he'd want is for Tagami to race ahead again. Six, 
Oh, what back. a finish that is. Goes across a single reply, and that's all that is needed to take it to nine points. Have a look at this one. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning work being done by Tagami. <laughs> Wang Hao's expression, I think that says it better than we ever could. <laughs> I was wrong. He's in imperious form, Togami, right now, and he's got four game points here. He is, he is. He's, in, he's just making it look easy, but actually it's not. He knows he's playing uh, one of the toughest players to encounter, but he's just, he's really, really in the zone today, Shinsuke Togami, and he knows it. Seven. Four game points for Shinsuke Togami. Marlon just salvaging one. Well, Second. Togami yeah, continues to surprise us and probably most of the fans in the Galaxy Arena because he's won the third game here. This has been something quite special to savor. The unique man to finish that off in Shinsuke Togami is really delighting the audience here. And, uh, yeah, and Shinsuke Togami takes the third game 11 7. He's winning 2 1 against Marlon. Now, yesterday I was giving you some stats on my, on the players and five game matches. So why don't we do that again, eh? Let's go for it, Chess. <laughs> Off one. the edge there from Shutsuke Togami. Now, Marlong in his first three games, his win percentages are 78% for the first game, 75 for the second, 76 for the third. And this is the fourth game now. He generally wins four game, the fourth game of a seven game match, 74% of the time. That's huge. The numbers dip, dip quite drastically after that, which is not good for him because he needs to win Love. Quite a few matches still. Quite a few games still. <laughs> Malong really trying to make the difference here. He knows that, well, he has to win this game somehow or the other. He's already one behind Shinsuke Tagami in the points and in the games as well. This is a man who's got 93% win rate against non-Chinese players, as I said. He has less than 10% upsets where he loses to lower-ranked players, but he is struggling here a little bit.
the three all as you can currently see. It's actually got surprisingly, I surprised a few uh, that Shunsuke Togami has got a 30% win rate against Chinese players. That I think is impressive. Well, picked out there from Marlon. He beat uh, Tomokazu. He's beaten Tomokazu Harimoto before. That's his biggest ever win, Shutsuke Togami. That was a world number four then, which is where Marlon is now. What's interesting is uh, in terms of upsets, he has less than 50% of his matches in upsets has he won. Togami. <laughs> Not something he does most of the time. Not easy, of course, to win a high against a high-ranked player. Oh, it's very difficult, but on a given day, uh, you know, when you see, well, some players step it up, step up their performances, go for gold. Thank you for He seems to be doing that right now, but Marlong is fighting back. He's taking the lead in this one. Yeah, he's turning it on. Seven he's three. He's looking quite good here. Togami, fourth game, win percentages, 68% of the time, he wins the fourth game. Seven, five. It's very interesting when you think about it, isn't it, Chess? Because right here on the fourth game, he's stepping it up. Uh, catching up with Marlong very soon. Marlong had a decent enough lead earlier. Togami on five, Marlong on seven. Along to save. There you can see Felix Lebron. Or was that Alexei? I'm always confused <laughs> when I watch them sitting down. <laughs> but I know who they are when they're on and find the table. Eight five here. This is good from our long. Put some distance between him and Togami, who was looking to. Who was too close for back. comfort. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Wang Hao celebrating points nowadays is something that we don't see too often, but he <laughs> did yesterday as well. Five, Five game points, yeah, for Ma Long. Much quicker game this one overall. Save one, Shinsuke Tagami. Fantastic.
He'll take that any way he can right now. Whether he puts his hand up or not, he's got that vital point. Still three game points to save for Togami. Marlon to serve and he'd like to finish this off before giving Togami too much. That's so Marlon takes that fourth game. All important for him to level things. Very, very fine finish here from Marlon. Just went for the serve, Togami. Well, knocking that out of the area, and I think that that really helped. I was looking to generate a bit of spin on that. I think that he was looking control of that. So, the fourth game, Marlon wins in 11 7. It's 2 off against Shutsuko Togami. to serve. So, Love good work ball. there from Marlon in quite possibly his last World Cup. He wants to go out with a bang and he generally tends to go deep in this uh, event. So, he wants to preserve that legacy, I suppose. So it's a well-matched affair to all. And I think, uh, Shez, it looks like it could be pushed towards a six or maybe a seven-game finish. Oh, it's also got a little bit more vocal, Marlon. Be happy to claim that quick exchange, not too long. Well, just a simple move back, and it's only when you start thinking about using a bit of variation that you can actually knock that ball away from the table. But as far as it goes, Marlon still leads by one point. Let's make that do, change direction, a beautiful finish down the line. Oh, absolutely marvelous work, keeping that same pace. So much needed here. Marlong now beginning to show signs of surging ahead. It's only a two-point lead. But the momentum, I think, he's gathered from earlier. He's carried over here, Glenn. Well, I think, you know, to, to look at him and to look at the frame of mind him, he is in at that point of time tells you a lot. Right now he's here, he's coming to win this game. I, I don't think there's any intent of defending or negotiating. Um, it certainly looks like it by his body language. Looking a lot more aggressive, a beautiful spin put on that by Pagami and generating that spin, just foxing Marlong. Well, every player gets that, every player. So 4-2, Marlong to serve again. This is where Pagami begins to rush it at the right time. 
just putting enough of paw in that after that decent exchanges. Knew he had to, well, send the winner through and that's exactly what he did. It's now 4-3. So Tagami looking to, well, just erase that lead that was there earlier with Malong. Malong says not for now. As he still continues to lead by two points. Well, that's going to be very, very interesting as Malong now surges three points ahead. I do believe that the world number four can hold on to this very game because he's, as I said, he's covering with intent. Shares he's looking a lot different from that first game or two games where he was, you know, taking it easy, settling in. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> and now he's got this four point cushion perfect for him. He's probably feeling a lot happier with himself. That's better from Marlong after some of the earlier games. Well, I think pretty disastrous for you, ask me, in that first two sets. <laughs> Up to eight points, and that serves him well. What can Marlong do here? Remember, it's tied at two games all. They're not just trading points, we're trading games, literally, these two. Uh, lovely reaction from Fogali, but it's not enough. Marlon moves to nine. Well, there are just some days with some of those shots. Uh, you know, Shez, you look at him and you know why he is considered king. Yeah, agreed. So three nine. And he's got seven game points. Oh, this this match has just turned on his head, hasn't it? It certainly has. But what's interesting is, um, I have to say this, Shez, every time there's a swap in sides, one of them wins a the game. Now, it's enough to be seen what happens with the next game, whether Kagami can actually win it. So Marlon moves in front now for the first time in this match. Very convincing, yeah. Kept it simple, just a quick exchange of the backhand, and then of course a tad bit of variation that got uh, Tagami to get the ball out of the table. So Marlon wins the fifth game, 11 3 against Shunsuke Tagami, and he now leads 3 2. to serve Love all. so into the sixth game uh, this has been a battle between the two Shinsuke Tagami starting off on the right foot Malong finding both his feet a little late in the game but I think he currently leads we do that's been very good from Malong isn't it you know it, it's, it's such an amazing it's such an amazing thing when you look at Malong when he starts off the game 
It's like he's in a slumber. He goes on to the second game where he's a bit more awake. And from the third game on, he's right there. Oh, what a reaction there, Marlon. Brilliant from him. An outstanding answer to that, isn't it? Outstanding, really. Nothing flush. Just positioning the bat perfectly. Yeah, oh, he is on a roll right now. Look at this. He's fired up now. He certainly is fired up. I'm thinking it's a late breakfast. But 3 0. Oh. Oh. That ball. He's just making Tagami stretch now. Four straight points. Can he continue this run? I think That's now like you'd have to say, unless Tagami really puts on something phenomenal, this could well be Marlong's to lose. He is he's a transformed player all of a sudden. We've seen this uh, in, in recent times, haven't we? Uh, she has always, actually. If it's a seven-game affair and a Chinese player wins three, he's going to go for the fourth. <laughs> no doubt about it. Got it! That pick nil. Picks love, sorry. is kind of emphatic and from Marlon. Got it! Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Little message being sent here as well, I think, from Marlon. Well, I think seven, seven love. The army still serving. Well, he just switched on at some point mm. of time. And was just trying to figure that out. So it's a point here for Tagami. He was just trying to figure out in, in the early part, you know, whether he was all there. And he wasn't. And I, and I thought it was probably because he was maybe just a little bit fatigued, maybe, you know, taken by surprise by Tagami. <laughs> but I think he just hadn't switched on. Uh, that was what it really was. Just no answers. Togami. So eight one, those points are growing in leaps and bounds. I think it's interesting. Well, that's it. Malong will just keep going at him. A wait for Tagami now to make those mistakes. Tagami knows he's in a spot of trouble and right here on the verge of probably getting out of this tournament with Malong going to the last four. It's now Malong on nine points. Oh, fantastic from Malong. Even at 9-1, he loses a point. He's going, no, no. That's the kind of standard he set himself. Well, I think when he comes at the start of a game, he's already planned what he wants to do for that game. <laughs> Nine, three. Almost got that back in. Tagami is fighting back now. He's on to three points. But Tagami does know he's still not out of the danger zone. It's interesting, Ashes, when you think about it, but Malong doesn't normally take a time out. It's very rarely. Yeah. 
Malong now has set himself up for seven match points. Oh, just that exchange. This is what he's known for. He controlled it. Variation of shots. The use of the forehand, the backhand. That's it. Fantastic work from Marlon to wrap this up after he looked to be perhaps in trouble earlier on. How he has turned this brilliantly, and not just that, he did it in style as well, Jeff. It's like he spilled a bit of milk and then he just took the top and wiped everything clean. That's what Marlon really did. He faltered just a little bit, you know, lost uh, two, mad, two games and then just went on a spree and cleaned it up. That last game was just, he was surreal. Malong, what a fantastic performance from him, and he also sails into the semi-finals. Remember, there's one lad already waiting there, and that is the, the Harimoto. But this is what I mean. Even that finish at the end, perfection, really, perfection. Yeah, that looks so good, didn't it? And Malong fights on here. Or perhaps a third World Cup in his potentially last appearance. How long? And Kitogami 5 11, 11 5, 7 11, 11 7, 11 3, 11 3. He wins by four games to two. A few words from uh, Marlon Chess. The amount of time that Wang Hao spends with them, he must be knowing them inside out. <laughs> what they like, what they don't like, what gets to them, what doesn't. Well, it looks like we're going to hear from him first before anything else. Before we get those highlights, I guess. So perhaps we'll just wait now to hear from Marlon. Congratulations to Marlon and uh, Togami is a quite tough opponent. How did you come back to win? Uh, Marlon for the the Chinese 其实我们两个交手的次数并不是很多我觉得第四局通过一些调整赢完以后，我觉得后两局发挥的还是不错。Um, actually, today's game is a really tough game, and since Togami has made himself into the quarterfinal, which means that he is in good form. I didn't play him much, but I know that he is a young and talented player, so I got well prepared for today's match. And in the first four game of today, I didn't take initiative to attack, but after adjustments in the last two sets, I adjust myself and play really good. And Marlon, how do you feel about your current form and what's your ambition here? Now, Marlon, you think your current form is in 
，也不确定自己打过啊、呃、第几次这样的场合进入到前四，但我会珍惜每一次这样的机会。给女士们、先生们，再次把掌声送给马龙，谢谢。An adjustment there from Ma Long is what turned it around for him. Great to hear his analysis of what happened. And I do believe, of course, the very fact that he said he's grateful to be here. He wasn't expecting to get through to this level of the tournament to, you know, dig so deep, get into the semi-finals. A humble word. We've got a cheer from the crowd as well. And this is how it started off. Uh, Shares, uh, you know, Ma Long and Shunsuke Tagami. We thought it was going to be one ruled by uh, Ma Long, but Shunsuke Tagami strongly surprised and kept doing it not long. Yeah, it was a great start from Shunsuke Tagami. He came out all guns blazing. I think that's kind of the approach he's taking with the upper-ranked players. He's the higher-ranked players. We've said that before. You cannot just play your normal game if you're a lower-ranked player, because otherwise you're going to lose. That's why you're ranked lower. You've got to do something different. You've got to be front, front the forward thinking. And he did that. Got it for him. He played his best. There's no doubt about it. I think he should be proud of the fact that he really gave it his all. But in the end, Malong, we've always said this, you're playing one of the best, probably the best in the world, and, you know, it, it's always going to be difficult. He can switch gears, he can change the direction, the course of the game, and that's exactly what big players do. So, I think, uh, well, more or less, I wouldn't say a predictable win, but I'll say something that we kind of expected uh, from Malong. Yeah, he said he adjusted things when he realized he wasn't attacking quite as much. And uh, once he did that, he was unstoppable, wasn't he? Well, he was. Just cleaned it up in that last game. And we saw how, you know, right here, initially, he was struggling a little bit. Once he got to those three games, that sixth game was just uh, kind of a whitewash. Yeah, irresistible form from Marlon. And that finishing touch right at the end, something to remember. So, Marlon straight through to the semi-finals. So there's the scoreline. We've got uh, one more match to come in these quarterfinals session. And the next, Malo represents.
士们、先生们，让我们准备好掌声欢迎运动员入场。Ladies and gentlemen, and now on to the umpire and players. And now let's return to Harrison, representing Japan. Women's last quarterfinal match here for the afternoon, and uh, Muhirana comes on. Look at her results so far. And now ladies and gentlemen. Now, Chen Mo, her opponent, wonderful player. She has only dropped one game so far. Meeting Aklo Akula. It's the one game there where she dropped a game. And then Sutasti Sawetabut, she won very, very easily against. Got her game face on as she always does. Chen Meng, what a player she is. Just to look in more detail, yeah, she beat uh, Natalia Bahor 4 0. And then against Srija Akula of India 3 1. Akula managed to take a game off her, but that was 13 uh, 15. She lost that one. Chen Meng. Final results. Mirana beat John Jihee of Korea 4 3. That was a thriller, wasn't it? Chen Mung, as I said, had it very straightforward against Dustin in the second round. Big one for us here, Shares, as we come to the last event of the early session. We've got two more men's and two more women's quarterfinals lined up for the evening session, what I'd love to call the SS of the supper session. But uh, this time, of course, we've had three amazing games that have gone by, and it's, uh, it's amazing to see how now we have come down to our fourth quarterfinal. It's a mixed bag for us, and we've been enjoying every moment of it so much to expect from this game says well i think chun Mun will be a big favorite here we'll tell you why in just a short while as these two just looking at each other's uh, brackets and we find out a little bit more about them as well in the process as they warm up so here's chun Mun, who's 30 and uh, seated fourth in the world she is, of course, also former world number one. Yu Hirano is currently 14th in the world. Chen Meng, what a fantastic player she is. One of the prodigies in China, wasn't it? Uh, Chen Kola uh, is the umpire here. She's also won the World Championship silver medal twice in 2019 and 2023. Third in 2021, she has uh, yeah, not won the World Champs, interesting enough. World Cup, this exact. She's the uh, defending champion this exact tournament. She won the last one in 2020. There's Wang Yidi who was eliminated yesterday by Miwa Harimoto in the stands. Asian Games, she came second in the singles uh, in 2018. And the Asian champs, she has finished second in 2017 and third in 2013. 
of course, she can point out the fact that she has got a gold medal at the Olympics. So, uh, that is fantastic. That's what Mia Hirano, she really created a name for herself back in 2017. She won the Asian Championships by beating three top Chinese players as well. And I think, uh, yeah, that's where people really took notice of her. Ding Ning, the world number one at the time she beat. Just and Chen Meng was also one of the players that she beat there Love in the actual it. final. And she set a new record for the youngest ever winner of the Asian Championships. And the, just the third non Chinese player ever to win it. So, yeah, Mia Hirano has got an Olympic medal of her own, a silver in the 2020 Games, a team event. In singles, she won a World Champ bronze in 2017. She has also won the World Cup back in 2016 herself. So she's a former champion too. And she has also won, as I mentioned, the Asian Championships in 2016, or 2017 rather. And having a bit of a comeback here, Mia Hirano, she kind of went into the wilderness for a little while. But she's kind of burst through again. And, uh, yeah, she's up, capable of upsetting the apple cart. Mia Hirano, as someone who used to be a number five player in the world, as I mentioned, that was in uh, 2017, towards the end of the year. But when you look at the head-to-head, -head, Glenn, it is not pleasant reading if you're Mia Hirano or a fan of hers. She's only won once, and that was at the Asian Championships. As I mentioned, every other time, seven other occasions, Chen Meng has won. Most recently, the Asian Games and the actual final. She won 3-2. So that was actually a little bit close, 3-2. They're having some close battles over the years. On only three occasions... Two occasions has Chen Meng won it in straight games. Three, one. So there's every chance here that Mu Hirano will inflict some damage at some point, but Chen Meng will be coming into this as the big favorite. Well, you did speak about Chen Meng earlier and you know and about another player who's so much like her, and that was uh, Miwa Harimoto. Um, Chen Meng herself uh, joined the provincial team when she was seven, Four, she was nine, four. sorry, she was drafted into the national team when she was 13. And she too was, you know, prodigy. She's such an amazing uh, ambassador for the sport, uh, you know, in China and globally as well. So interesting battle here between the sides. But uh, a lesser known fact and something about Mio Hirano, you know, you spoke about her being in the wilderness. Um, she's had a fair share of worries. Started off her career or her career path when she was seven. And there was two choices for her, she says. One was to become a table tennis player, and the other to become a retailer selling Hello Kitty products. And that is really her passion. So besides playing table tennis, she has probably one of the most expensive, rare, and priced collections of Hello Kitty hairpins. She's, she's big on it, very passionate yeah, she, about she, it, and now has a tie-up with the company too, I guess, that you know handles it. That, that was a dream. She had one was to play uh, table tennis for Japan at the Olympics, and the other was to become a Hello Kitty, uh, you know, Five. ambassador or collector. And she's, she's kind of done, done both, hasn't she? Yeah. <laughs> she has. Brilliant. And she's extremely, I've seen, you know, in interviews, extremely soft-spoken, very graceful, very, very ladylike. She was, uh, she's an amazing, she's an amazing ambassador for the sport in Japan. Well, Chen Meng leads here by two. Tough call right now between these two ladies, but Chen Meng just showing that slight X factor as she started off. <laughs> Lovely finish there, giving uh, Hirano no space at all and no reaction time. Very quick from her. Chen Meng now calling the shot slowly. She's on to seven. Go. 
24-7. And Brianna will hold her own on her serve. Good start here from uh, Chen Meng, who was instrumental for China in the World Team Championships finals last, uh, well, just a few weeks ago, effectively. We have Rhino's part of that as well. Chen Meng was in the playing in the deciding match. against uh, Viva Harimoto, lost the first game, something like 11-4, and looked like she was in trouble, but then she bounced back, showed real resolve. Five, nine. The oldest of the uh, the big four as well, Chen Meng, Sun Ningxia, Wang Manu, and Wang Yidi. China's women's table tennis. That was... Big yesterday, wasn't it, to have two big upsets, one in the men and one in the women. Yeah. It's China. Today it's pretty much gone according to plan. Till now. Five game points for Chen Meng. First one. Didn't have to sweat too much for that chair. She was very much in control of the whole game. Hirano did have a moment, but Chen Meng definitely, as we said earlier, does back in the X Factor here right now. So, Chen Meng beats Mia Hirano in the first game, 11 5. Takes the early lead here. Second game, Tirana to serve, Lavoy. Tirana will kickstart the action in the second game. One love. Yeah, it's it's it can't be easy when you're up against a player that you just never ever beaten or just once before I mean, albeit that was a big occasion in the Asian Championship Finals but one, one. Yeah. tough and then she cracks that wrist open well it's another story altogether so one all Interesting to see Mia Hirano actually on her debut she won the World Cup in 2016 and then she progressively her results actually got worse. Oh, 
Brilliant down the line, changes the angle. The wins the rally, Chen Meng. Well, extreme control there. Well played. She's used that to pick up a few winners against Serrano. Hirano says, I can do that as well. Yeah, lovely, on the back end there, from Hirano. Yeah, just going back to what I said, she won in 2016, semis in 2017, quarters in 2018, round of 16 in 2019. It's been a steady slide. Hopefully, as I said, then she's kind of turned things around as well in the last few years. Well, she kind of went to the wilderness and making a comeback. She was preferred ahead of Mima Ito to be Japan's, one of Japan's two representatives at the Olympics. That was announced around the uh, time of the World Team Championships. It caused a bit of a kerfuffle. Just how quick everything is. Absolutely. What entertainment stunning, for us. Absolutely stunning there from both these amazing ladies. Really giving it their all. Pure test of skill. And again, she opts to go down the line, changing the angle up there, Chen Meng. That option has worked for her a couple of times now. Four, four. Oh, disappointing serve for her. One of the few things you want to do in this uh, well event is you've got to just make sure you get everything right. And I do believe that the smallest mistakes can make a huge difference. Four, five. Intense rallies at the moment between these two. Once you get to the rallies, that's when Tenman really shines, doesn't she? Because she'll get it back on the table and just wait for Hirano, you know, to make any sort of mistake or an error. She's hit the net this time. Five, five. So Hirano back on level terms. It feels like Hirano's just got a bit more, between, uh, a bit between the teeth, like just a bit more grittier now. Five, six. Yeah, I talked about earlier about, you know, having a, a poor record against someone and how that could affect you going into it. I remember the, I was telling you about the World Team Championships finals recently in Busan, where China played Japan in the final. And Chen Meng was up against Hina Hayata. Hina Hayata had never beaten her in 13 matches and turned it around that day. What a time to do it. And that's that kind of sparked up this Japan revival in the in the tie. They almost beat China, as I said. Chen Meng bounced back and played a second match later and beat Miwa Harimoto. So she became kind of the, the heroine of it all. But the point I'm making is, Mi Hirano, she can't be put off by that 7-1. That She'll have to draw a line under it and think, you know what, today's a new day, fresh day. I can do this. I think she's fighting back really strong. Just you know, keeping pace with her opponent here. But more than take the lead, she's been playing catch up. And I think that that's going to be a slight worry for her. She's got to start well. Just believing that she can overcome the ghosts of, of the past. Mm, yeah. <laughs> that's really what she needs to do. I mean, it's, it's a very different feel to this, this second game, where Chen Meng's having 
to fight a lot harder here. She is. But I do like the way that she does have a decisive plan. Chen Meng's got a plan for certain. And she puts that into action. I'm just going to correct myself. It was coming into that final, Hina Hayata had lost all seven meetings with Chen Meng and then finally beat her in those World Championship finals in the, ta in the team event. Seven, so 7-1 there, it's 7-1 here. Ami Hirano, just that one win in eight. But uh, she needs to do something quick here before Chen Meng takes the second game. Please play. Okay, trying to move them along. I do get the feeling that Iran was still staying close. Chen Meng says, not really, here it is. A straight off winner. A bullet from that bat. That's all that's needed to finish it. And now it's down to, well, game point again. Three game points. Ten, eight. Rana will say one of those. Well, a couple of game points. So she does eventually get there, Chen Meng. Tougher second game. She's looking pretty good at the moment. Lovely finish there from Chen Meng. Straight down the line. She's had many winners on that very uh, finish. She does it again. So Chen Meng wins the second game, 11 8 against Mio Rorano and leads two games to zero. Third game, Chendo serve, La Ball. So, second, third game here, and really, Mihirano doesn't want to be down three and then have to win one, four in a row one, to try one. and turn it around. That's just a big, big ask. So, he has to try and pull one back here. I think you're so right about that, Chess, but this is a very crucial time for her. Chen Meng is, is fired up. Uh, she's already gone two games ahead. I wouldn't put it past her to claim this one as well. Hirano's just got a bit quicker. Two, one. And I think that's good. That's something she wasn't doing in the earlier two games, backing on the pace. Two, two. And Mongol 
hold on and stay close. Two, three. Tejano looking a lot quicker, a lot faster here. Hirano in the lead now. Four, two. New Hirano understands that she's got to pull one back here, definitely. Four, three. Ben Meng just has got a bit of luck on her side, too. push things, and Penman just ups the ante. She just disposed of that challenge, didn't she? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And there it goes, just totally in command there. Yes, Lovely form finish from her. Four, five. Dan Hirano will hold her own. Six, four. Impressive from the Japanese athlete. Gauging the situation. Well, doing what she can best, and Chen Meng's had a few Errors in there. Seven, four. So just unsettled a little bit. Yeah. I'd agree. This is, uh, we, we kind of joked about it yesterday, called it third game syndrome, where one player has played very well and taken the first two pretty comfortably, and then all of a sudden, four, eight. The intensity just drained out of the situation and the opponent takes advantage. Hirano just looking very calm and collected here. She knows what she's doing. Um, she's just coming a bit stronger in this game, quicker, been attacking more. How you do it? Yeah, it's better from Chen Meng. close as soon as she can. Chen Meng. Nine, six. Yeah, she just wasn't as happy as she was earlier. Chen Meng, a player who's got an 84% win rate overall. Chen 
seven, nine. And Glenn, I mean, <laughs> her record against non-Chinese players is even better than Fan Zhengdong and Wang Chuqin and Ma Long. 95% of her matches against foreign players, she has won. That's, that's, that's pretty good, isn't it? She's only lost 10 matches against non-Chinese players. Oh, that's what, that kind of explains what's happening here. That quality, isn't it? That's some sheer quality of uh, table tennis that we're looking at from Chen Meng. Well, she's started moving a lot more now in this game. Timeout call by Mu Hirano as Chen Meng on on her. Time. Eight, nine. Samir so, Hirano under a bit of pressure here. That's why she called the timeout. Nine, nine. nine all. She gets baffled back brilliantly. She was trailing by about five points. She was in some trouble. And it's all square here. Chen Mun. Can she go on to win this one? Well, I do believe she has. If she goes on to win this one, she's going to claim it in four. Well, it looks like it. She's, uh, she's fired up. I think Miu Hirano took her totally by surprise in this third game. Came at her with a flurry of attacks and shots. Yeah. But uh, uh, Chen Meng just wound her way back, and that's what, you know, experienced thinking players do. And now I think... Uh, just as we mentioned, the pressures on Miu Hirano. Wow, what a turnaround this is. Really... Game points now for Chen Meng. Left, nine, ten. Very calmly, very controlled, without that win out of the bag so easily. Long rally, but well deserved there. Under tremendous pressure, Chen Meng has done well. The left man man came. He's very
I think the plus side for Mia Hirano here, Glenn, is that she's progressively got better. You can see that in the, in the scores. But that's scant consolation when you haven't won a single game yet, right? I think the real burst of energy that we saw from Miyu Hirano was in that uh, third game. And then, you know, uh, Chen Meng just shut it down. One, one. And that's, that's what happened. So her confidence, of course, is going to be slightly affected. When she took that time out, I think it was that's where she actually got the hit. And uh, Chen Meng mentally just looking a lot stronger. Mm. Yeah. Let one, one. One. Yeah, it's tough. You can hear Marlin there strutting away. He's one of two people who've won the Men's World Cup four times. Tremendous achievement. Two, two. Don't forget, Mia Hirano narrowly escaped an upset there at the hands of Jun Ji Hee yesterday in a hard-fought battle. 4-3 victory. Davis, probably for the final. And there was a real fighting spirit about three, three. Mia Hirano, which she needs to display today. She was down in the first two games against John. Used to yield, and she mounted this fierce comeback to eventually take the win. And now, of course, she's up against it here. Oh, she said she failed to get the groove in that match yesterday, and she said she had to reflect on that for today's match and beyond. It's amazing, isn't it, when you think about it, what a battle it's been between these two. I did believe that Miu Hirano was going to bring it on, uh, Shez, but uh, well, Chen Meng just being too strong. It's 3-5, Hirano, to serve. Yeah, she said she would come into this with a challenger's mindset, meaning that she was pretty a high-ranked player. He's getting blown away now, slowly but surely. Points behind Yemi Hirano. Men will definitely want to finish this. Uh, just a little net interference once again. Seven, four. Just a bit too much of spin on that, Mir Hirano trying to combat it. That turn. Mm. Five, seven. Still fighting back. I do like Hirano, she's, she's a bit unusual compared mm. to the other, um, you know, uh, table tennis stars in the women's. 
Um, she's rather quiet. Not too much of uh, expression. Looks the same when she wins or loses a point. Well, those are the kind of rallies that Chen Meng usually wins. Her runner's just a point behind. She needs to embark on a run here. Just making Chen Meng well sweat here in this game once again. She did it in the previous game as well. Well, turn this has been for Chen Meng. Mm. Two points away from sailing through to the semi finals. Let's make that one point away. Yep, she's almost there, Chen Meng. China through, that's uh, Ma Long and uh, Chen Meng. Ma Long, of course, would be a very happy man. So Chen Meng beats me, Hirano, 11-5, 11-8, 11-9, 11-6. She wins four straight games. Excellent stuff from her. And uh, hopefully we're going to get an interview from her. Back at uh, some of these points, Chen Meng was excellent from uh, start to finish, really. She completely deserves the triumph today. Now we're just waiting to hear from our winner, Chen Meng. Congratulations to Chen Meng. Gongxi Chen Meng, a straightforward win. So, how did you feel about your performance? Gongxi Chen Meng, 那一场的四比零的胜利，你觉得自己的表现状态怎么样？跟大家分享一下。呃，没想到吧？因为我今天对今天的比赛还是做好了充分的这种困难的准备吧。尤其是呃，对。平野的近期的焦灼，其实每一次也都非常焦灼吧。所以在今天比赛也是呃全力以赴去拼尽每一分球吧。也非常感谢在现场为我加油的球迷们。呃、uh, ，Well, I never expected I can win four straight games. I've made a lot of preparations pre-match. Actually, previously I can play Hirano for several times, and every match was quite tight. So today, I just played to my best. I also would like to thank all the fans to come here to cheer for me. Thank you. And now you're through the semifinals. How will you prepare for it? 接下来呢，你就要进入到半决赛当中了。会怎么样准备接下来的比赛？呃
刚打完脑子有点空白，但是，呃，首先我还是给我的队友孙颖莎加油吧，呃，希望能够，呃，希望她晚上的比赛能够赢下这场比赛，然后也希望我们能够会师到半决赛吧，呃，我也会尽全力在场上。去呃，享受每一分球，尽自己最大的努力吧。Oh, I just finished last match, so I my mind just went blank suddenly when being asked this question. But I really hope that my teammate Sun Yingsha could win the next round, and then we can meet in the semifinal. And I will enjoy every moment on the court, and I wish that we can both play to our best. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's get out of for Chen Meng. 再次把掌声欢呼送给陈梦。Thank you. Yep, her mind's a bit blank at the moment. She's just uh, recovering from the uh, the match that she's just had, Chen Meng, but she knows she is through. She can be safe in the comfort, uh, Glenn, that she put in another superb performance. Well, she certainly did, and I think it was a very, very exciting time uh, for Chen Meng, uh, very much in control. She dominated most part of that game. Uh, just a bit of a surprise where she was thrown back, uh, you know, in that third game, but she came good after that. And yes, how it all panned out. Miu Hirano also gave us her moments. Uh, she really is a fantastic athlete and needed for a sport like this. She brings her personality and character to the game itself. She's soft-spoken, graceful, and uh, I think she played the game pretty much in that vein. Yeah, you know, Chimba was so focused on one thing only, and to win, but win handsomely. And that record of hers against Miu Hirano, um, well, it kind of continued today. Uh, the dominance. It's very rare, as I said, for her to have actually taken Hirano in straight games. She normally drops a game or two along the way. So that would be pleasing for her that she had played the perfect game today. Well, I think so, and I think it's a great, it's great preparation for the semi-finals because you never know who she's going to meet, and it really will be a difficult when she gets to that part. So this is really what she needed, maybe the perfect setup for that or motivation for it. Uh, we will see, of course, Hirano back another day, but she did make the quarterfinals and she did shine in this tournament to a certain extent. Yeah, it was uh, very, very nice. That there was a bit of a fight back from Hirano in the. Uh, third game and then it sort of it just dissipated after that and she she was getting better as the match progressed i think after the timeout yeah she should have avoided the timeout <laughs> so chenman is through to the semi-finals we'll have a look at the lineups here she will await the winner of sun ying sha and jung yi jing that's uh, later on tonight Harimoto there waiting to see who she'll play either Hina Hayata or Wang Man. That match will also be on later tonight. So enjoy this uh, very much, uh, Shares. We've had a great uh, early session. Uh, totally loved it and uh, looking forward to the evening one now. Yeah, thanks very much to Glenn Masquerinus. Uh, we will be back in about uh, four, three hours from now for the evening session here at the ITTF World Cup Macau 2024. Five, three. 